this is my story. Going from feeling lost and being stuck at a 9 to 5 I don't like, to traveling the world with my girlfriend doing what I love. Welcome, my name is Stefan and you're about to watch what is probably the most important video I've ever made. And man, I was in doubt for a very long time whether I should share this video or not, but I decided I must, because this is exactly the type of video I used to watch in challenging times in my life that gave me the inspiration and the motivation to go from being stuck in the rat race for seven years to throwing everything away, to quit my six-figure job, and to start working on my own personal brand while traveling the world with my girlfriend. So if I can change the life of just one person watching this video, then I almost feel obligated to do so. And be mindful that my channel name is called Stevanovic, and that's because my roots lie in Eastern Europe. I was born in Serbia, Belgrade, and when I was about eight months old, my parents fled to the Netherlands when the Yugoslavian war broke out in 1992. I can remember my childhood from zero to 12 years old until I went to high school. It was pretty chill and mostly focused on fun. And I remember receiving my first digital camera for Christmas. This was basically the, the spark or the trigger of my curiosity for filmmaking and visual storytelling. Little did I know that it would play a big role in my life later on. But first, high school. From 12 years old to 18 years old, my life mainly consisted of going to school. On the side, I just worked normal side jobs like working in a grocery store, uh, delivering newspapers. And I was also filming around in the neighborhood with some friends making stupid videos like Grand Theft Auto, Camilla Street. That's the name of a street where I grew up. But I never did anything with those videos, partly because I think that was exactly the time when YouTube was created. So before YouTube, I didn't have a platform to share those videos. And when YouTube was created, I think it was just too, it felt awkward to share those videos publicly because it was meant more for my friends and family and myself. What a shame. So next to working those normal jobs, I remember my first side hustles. And one of them was actually, oh man, I'm not sure if they're really legal. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about this, but fuck it. I'll keep it as vague as possible. So there was this video game store uh, about a 30 minute ride from where I live. And the people working at that video game store were basically idiots. Because you could enter the store and at the back of the store where all the video game cases were displayed, you could just open the case and the booklets would be right there. But that meant that for very popular games, online games, the key code was also in that booklet. So basically what I did every couple of weeks, a friend of mine and I drove on my scooter. It was, I can remember it so clear, it was really cold and rainy and we would like drive for 30 minutes to arrive at the store and we were pretending like we were looking around but what we were actually doing was making photos of those key codes and we would sell those key codes back in our high school so basically you could either buy the actual game for i don't know 50 60 bucks or you could buy the key codes from us for 20 or 30 bucks so we did that a couple of times um <laughs> yeah i don't know some people sell coke and drugs on the street we sold key codes. And another side also was, uh, since I'm from Serbia, every summer I would go on a holiday to see my family in, uh, in Serbia and I would always bring back these carton of cigarettes, like a lot of cigarettes because they were so cheap in Serbia. They were around like one or two bucks and in Holland they were like triple the price. So I would sell them to friends and people that were smoking at the time for a profit. Yes guys, in my time there was no drop shipping or flipping Instagram pages or NFTs. These were the side hustles of my time. There, there wasn't even a social media back and all we had was MSN. If you don't know what MSN is, you're too young for this video, bro. Another thing we didn't have back then is AG1. But I'm thankful it exists today because it's made being a digital nomad so much easier. Because AG1 is the nutritional drink from today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. And AG1 has basically replaced my green smoothie plus most of my supplements back home now that I'm traveling the world. But AG1 is so much more than just a greens powder. It contains 75 different ingredients including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens, all in just one scoop or one travel pack. Easy to carry while traveling and easy to take daily. That's it. And taking AG1 for a while now, I can honestly say I do feel an improvement in my focus and this sustained energy boost throughout the day while working. And one other clear benefit I notice is that sometimes while traveling to new countries, I can really feel my 
gut health, struggling to adapt to the new food and water. But since I've been taking AG1, it feels like it's supporting my digestive system. It all feels like it works a little bit smoother and better. So go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevanovic to get your first order for 2023. And since Athletic Greens is sponsoring this video, they're also letting me give away a one year free supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs with your first purchase. Lettergreens.com slash Stevanovic. So I turned 18 and this was the point where up until now it was all fun and games, not really thinking about life and my future in general. So now I was forced to think about like what I want to become, what do I want to study? And I had three options, three things I was thinking about. Film Academy, Computer Science or Business, some kind of business management study. Eventually I didn't pick Film Academy because I remember thinking about like, it could be hard to find a job and I know it's not that well paid as for example, computer science. I also didn't pick computer science because <laughs> I also didn't pick computer science because I whoa, what I see I was I can ask. I also didn't pick computer science because I remember thinking it was too much for nerds. It was a bit too much focused on tech and coding and programming and on nerdy stuff. And on the other hand, the business study was too general for me. It's like everybody who didn't know what they wanted to study chose the business studies. So I ended up studying something in between technical and business industrial engineering and management a perfect balance between engineering calculus statistics but also the business side of things but besides picking my studies i still wasn't really thinking about my future and what i wanted to become etc so the first two years of university life was all freedom i moved out of my parents house i lived by myself in a dorm room and yeah again fun and games and smoking weed and parties and girls so instead of starting to think about my future and my life or where I wanted to go with my life, I doubled down on fun and games and stupid thinking about it now, but that's what I did right back then. My net worth at that time was probably the lowest it has ever been because I had to borrow money to study and to go to university. I was working two side jobs in the weekend, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was a delivery boy for some Thai food. And during the week I was working these like a charity, like a door to door sales for charities. And I can remember that I was also maturing. So I knew deep down that after studies are over, after university is over, I did have to go to work and I did have a whole life in front of me. But instead of thinking about it and thinking what I want to do and become, I was just suppressing it with fun, drinking and smoking weed. And I don't know if I was maturing, if it was part of that phase in my life or because I was experimenting with psychedelics at the time, but I became very introspective. I started thinking about my life more, about my parents, about my childhood and especially about my future, where I was going. All I could think of was, I don't want to go through the standard path in life. The image of finishing university, graduating, and then working for 40 years at a nine to five and then retiring wasn't that exciting to me. It's not, it didn't motivate me to finish my studies. The only reason I was studying is because I just wanted to have a well-paid job so I could sustain myself, pay the bills, and then figure out what I want to do in my life. Not because I was so excited and motivated to become an engineer or whatever. And the only thing that I kind of did like was entrepreneurship. But to me back then, there was like this one big fake thing and entrepreneurs in my mind were like gods almost, like guys that have somehow managed to hack the system and escape the matrix and are now living free, building out their business, doing whatever the fuck they wanna do. I don't know how they did it, but I looked up to them. And I also wanted to escape the system. I also I wanted to become like those entrepreneurs, but I had no idea how to do that. By the way, a funny side note, at the time I was making these mixes on SoundCloud to listen to myself when I was studying, like Deep House, Tech House, and they're still on my SoundCloud and you can see the names I gave those mixes. You can see my thoughts exactly at the time. Anyways, I still suppress those thoughts and feelings by having fun. I was really good at shutting off my responsibilities and what I should be thinking about in life and just smoke weed and party instead. But every night when I went out, I would come back home and I would always be confronted with those thoughts. And was, those thoughts would become stronger and stronger as I was growing older. And I remember clearly, this was probably one of the lowest points in my life. I think it was October 2013. I was at a friend's house, chilling, smoking weed, just a couple of weeks before exam week started. And the next day I would wake up feeling anxiety for the first time in my life. Like I woke up and I had this buzzing feeling right in the middle of my body that something is wrong. Like, you know that feeling when you're about to give a presentation to 
a hundred people, but I just woke up in my own bed. There was nothing to feel anxious about. But it was, it was here, it was like a clear, anxious feeling. And I freaked out, it wouldn't go away. I took a cold shower, I started meditating, and it wouldn't go away. In fact, meditating at the time only made it worse. Looking back at it now, it was probably the combination of the upcoming exams, the stress I had, smoking a lot of weed, suppressing those feelings of responsibility. And funny enough, the meditating maybe made me more self-aware and conscious about all those things I just mentioned. Yeah, I remember at one of the jobs I had, the, the charity, the door-to-door -door sales, like before we started walking door to doors, we would always gather at the office and we would do like role playing just to get in the flow of sales. And the manager would always pick someone random to do the role playing. And as soon as he said like, who wants to go? And he like glanced over me. I have never in my life felt so anxious. Like my heart was pounding in, in my throat. And I honestly, I remember thinking if he picks me, I'm just gonna run the fuck out of this office. There's no way I can do this. There's no way I can speak even one word. I was so anxious. And I remember one last thing that was really heavy. Uh, I was riding the bus back home from some kind of lecture at university. And I just remember I had this sense of derealization. For the people that don't know what it is, it's this sense of ha suddenly having an intense feeling that reality is not real. That what you're seeing in front of you is like a movie or a video game. Like you don't have control over reality anymore. That's and I got so freaked out and it just lasted a couple of minutes, but that was probably the most fucked up point in my life. Like I was really terrified. I had no idea what was going on. You could call this my first experience with the dark night of the soul. The only thing I did was go to the gym. That was like my only positive thing in my life back then. During those workouts, I almost felt like normal again. And every time after workout, the anxiety would be a little bit less. And I don't know, I stopped smoking weed. I focused on my health, working out. Things started to get better again. I think about two, maybe three months in, I was back to normal again. No anxiety, no derealization, thoughts, whatever. I was my old self again. And little did I know that things would get worse again. But first things got a lot better. I remember like there was a clear turning point where things were going so good at the time. And you'll probably laugh when you hear this. It was January, 2014. It's the release date of a movie that kind of changed the trajectory of my life. It was The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> I had been a rich man and I had been a poor man and I choose rich every fucking time. I remember going to the cinema with the boys and as soon as we finished watching the movie, we walked out of the theater and we were so hyped. Like, yeah, we have to start a business and let's do this shit and we need to make money. And we were so hyped and it wasn't like, it was just a couple of weeks after that. I think I started my first entrepreneurial project with a good friend of mine. It was called Zizpass. The idea was like a card that whenever you buy something, instead of getting a paper receipt, you would get it digitally on your Zizpass. We managed to buy a domain name. We had like half a page of a business model and we had a logo made in PowerPoint. And that's about as far as we got with that project. It was too complicated and I don't know, it was a dead end. And even though it was a dead end, it did spark my entrepreneurial curiosity. And that year turned out to be very important because I started my second Second business and this time a little bit more serious and all by myself and it was called wash at work and basically the idea was it was like a mobile car wash I would wash cars at a location so clients would go to the office park their car at the parking spot and I would wash their car while they were at work wash at work and this time I had even a website I had clothing merchandise I had my first couple of clients. That was my first successful experience with starting my own business. I also met my girlfriend at the time. I also graduated and I went backpacking. And the idea with backpacking was probably when I was in that dark period, I just knew I wanted to get out. I wanted to experience life in a completely different way. I still have no idea what I want to do with my life, but maybe if I go backpacking, I will find myself, I will meet people and opportunities. And this was the first time that I thought, you know what, I'm gonna buy a GoPro bring that GoPro and make an after movie. Like that was the plan I had for a year before I went backpacking. And I even knew what songs I wanted to use for that after movie. It was Ben Pierce, What I Might Do, Kilter Remix. That, that was supposed to be the intro of the after movie. I had it all planned out, but as you know, plans change. Eventually those three months of spending in Southeast Asia with friends uh, was mainly focused on partying, having fun, going on adventures. We did film some footage with the GoPro, but there was a point where the GoPro got infected with a virus, the SD card, and we couldn't shoot new footage anymore and it kind of faded away. Like we didn't do anything with the GoPro anymore. Never made that after movie. Might actually make one, uh, who knows. Anyways, this was the first time in my life that I experienced true freedom. No teachers, no parents, no nothing. Just three months of traveling and doing whatever we want. But 
this also triggered the second darkest point in my life. Because when I came back, it was winter in Holland. It was like minus 10 degrees Celsius. I had no money at all. I was broke. I had no job lined up. And now I also had this conscious of like, this is what life could be, fun, games, freedom. Back to reality. Still don't know what to do. I need to get a job. I came back from traveling and I had to get a job. So I landed my first job that kind of fitted my studies and I became a tech recruiter. After one month, I quit my job because it was even worse than expected. So the whole business model of the company was find someone on LinkedIn and rent them out to a company and get a commission on their salary. But the fact is the company was only focused on money, meaning we would squeeze out every penny out of candidates and rent them out for as much money as possible to companies. It was a toxic company I was working for and a very toxic environment with the managers and colleagues. And I really remember feeling down in this period. I didn't have a lot of energy. I would be at the office at 8 o'clock in the morning, work until 5, 5.30, commute about 45 minutes. And the only positive things during the week were going to the gym as soon as I came home, eating with my parents, and then going straight to bed to watch a movie or some kind of TV show. And the gym, my parents, and that movie were like the highlights of my day. That's what made me pull through the day. And I recall clearly, like, there was one evening just finished dinner with my parents and I watched the movie The Tourist with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. And it's not the best movie there is, but at that time it really sucked me in. Like I was really escaping reality. That was the first time I noticed when the movie was over that I was, that I completely forgot where I was. And as soon as the movie was over, I felt sad again. I remember when I was at the office, like the only thing I did was counted the hours until the day was over. I counted the days until it was weekend. And I remember one Monday morning when the weekend was over and I had to start work again and the alarm clock went off and I just had tears in my eyes. That was like the first time ever in my life that I fucking had to cry for something as stupid as going to work. But it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily the job that made me cry. It was just the fact that I woke up and I realized like, yeah, this is life. Like it's not supposed to be fun. It's just doing a shitty job, working, earning money. And if you do this for 40, 50 years, then you can retire and finally be happy. So basically my thought at the time was, life mostly sucks, but it's about those few precious happy moments. And this was the reality I was starting to accept at the time. Thinking about it now, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, that was probably the lowest point in my life. I wasn't depressed, but if I hadn't quit my job at that time, who knows where I would end up, but I did. After one month, I just quit my job without having another job lined up. The only thing I had going at the time was, I applied to this traineeship and I was lucky enough to actually get hired for this traineeship. And the start of this traineeship marked the start of a new phase in my life. The phase I like to call the fueling of the rocket. <laughs> the, the rocket of my life that is about to lift off. But first, I kind of got kicked out of my house and I moved to Amsterdam so I could start this traineeship. And the traineeship was actually really good. As in, I got to work for really interesting companies. I got to learn a lot. I actually started to enjoy the jobs I was doing. I started to grow into my data analyst role and the pay was decent. I got to express my creativity a little bit through my dashboards and reports. But that's the whole, that, that was even more dangerous than my previous job. These jobs were okay. They were not that bad. But I would argue this is even more dangerous than having a completely shitty job. Because if you have a job that really, really sucks, there's nothing else to do than to quit that job and find something else. If your job is okay and you can at least pay the bills and it's not that gruesome of a job, you can fall in this comfort zone trap. You can get stuck in that rat race. And I was seeing this happening. And like the big conflict I had in this phase of my life was that on the one hand, I was slowly starting to accept that nine to five kind of life, like working from Monday to Friday, have drinks with colleagues on Friday, uh, enjoy the weekend and then dread going back to work on Monday. And on the other hand, I was like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to accept this nine to five life. I'm, I'm going to build things, start things, build a business. So this is the, in these four or five years, I started so many projects. The first one being, I can remember the Vexit, which was bas basically a blog about virtual reality. Then another thing I was working on was called Bitcoin Troller. So I made like a, a website, it wasn't business. It was just more of a hobby, a passion project. Just a website with tutorials, instructions on how to get started with Bitcoin, how to set up your wallet. Another thing I can remember is Aftro, which is basically like a video editing platform. Eventually it turned out to be very complex. I didn't do anything with it. Then the next thing was this RB30 platform. RB30 stood for retired by 30 
which was actually cryptocurrency courses. Uh, we hosted them on Udemy, earned a couple of hundred bucks with that, but eventually didn't do anything with it. And another key thing that I started in this phase of my life was my first YouTube channel. It was called Expresso Clock. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Espresso Clock. And I can remember that I was saving up money to buy an iPhone 7 because I knew the camera was decent enough to start a YouTube channel. So I bought the iPhone, started the YouTube channel. I think I uploaded like three videos. One of those videos was me talking to the camera. Like I was driving my car and I put the iPhone on some kind of phone holder in the car. And I remember uploading that video. And one of the few comments I had was a guy saying, how about instead of talking to the camera you pay attention to the road i hope you die in a car crash you fucking asshole something along those lines and it got to me man it it really got to me under my skin i wasn't used to hate comments back then i didn't i only had good intentions so i couldn't understand where this guy was coming from now when i think about it it's like sad why would that guy tell that a ra random stranger on the internet to die in a car crash anyways it got to me i quit making videos and i was like yeah maybe this is not for me maybe the guy's right not gonna do this anymore. What a shame. It was in 2016. Imagine if I would have continued creating videos at the time. But I guess the lesson is, guys, don't be scared of being judged. You will be judged no matter what you do, so you might as well do what you want to do. Anyways, I was so I was working on these side hustles and starting new things, trying new things. I knew I wanted to become an entrepreneur. I was just looking for the thing to like, this is it. Like, I'm good at this. This is easy for me. I can make money off this. But it just couldn't find that thing and on the other side i was climbing the corporate ladder i was getting better jobs i was getting higher pay i switched companies i started working for this big multinational and i started working a lot with senior management and i always thought like if i don't start something for myself as an entrepreneur or my own business you know working as a manager is pretty cool as well that was like my end goal to become some kind of senior manager uh if i would climb that corporate ladder but at this company working with actual senior managers i found out that these guys were working 10 hours a day. They would reply to my emails when they were at home at 10 o'clock in the evening, 11 o'clock in the evening. They would brag about bringing their laptop on holidays to do some work. They would be connected 24 seven to the job. And that's where I realized these guys are stressed out. They work so much. They never go on holidays. They don't spend time with their friends and family. They don't have time for sports. I don't want to become a manager anymore. So I knew I don't want to become a manager anymore. That's a dead end. I don't want to go this corporate life path. I'm now 100% sure. I still didn't know what kind of business I wanted to start because I still haven't found that thing I was looking for. In the meantime, I was connecting with people, with like-minded people. And I came in touch with this guy that I started a coaching program with together. And basically the coaching program was pretty much the whole journey I was going through, like from being stuck to finding out exactly what you want in and out of life. And by doing that coaching, I also learned a lot from others and then about myself. So eventually in 2019, this turned out to be a very pivotal year because I was doing the coaching. So I learned a lot about what I want out of life, what I don't want out of life. Because of that, I decided to buy my first camera, the Sony a6000. I don't, this bad boy, which basically started my whole YouTube journey. Another thing that happened is I traveled a lot that year. I went snowboarding in the Alps. Uh, I went to Malaga, Spain. I went to New York. I went to a friend's wedding in Morocco. I went to Mexico where I also did some coaching. That was the first digital nomad kind of experience. I went to Berlin. I went to Chernobyl. So I traveled a lot that year and I really got into the vibe of just traveling, experiencing freedom, doing a bit of work on my laptop in Mexico. And I also brought my camera to Mexico, shot some footage and decided to make an after movie out of that but it took me half a year to upload that video and i'll come back to that but what was 2019 important as well because i bought my first house and as soon as i bought my first house right after that i started freelancing and i waited until i could buy my first house because it's almost impossible to get a mortgage as a freelancer so i bought the house and then quit my pretty decent job at the time and started freelancing and i view freelancing as like really the perfect stepping stone between a nine to five and working on your own business and entrepreneurship because as i said the corporate ladder was a dead end to me i don't want to become a manager anymore so i have no motivation to climb that ladder I still didn't know exactly what kind of business I wanted to start. So freelancing, it's like in between. You are your business, but you're still working in corporate office environments, but you have more flexibility. You start earning more money. Flash forward to start of 2020. I uploaded the video I was talking about, the Mexico after movie, which was titled Escape. It's always been there, guys. It's always been there. Always the escape the nine to five. Anyways, why did it take me half a year to upload the video? Well, because it took me a long time to edit the video, but also because I was scared 
of publishing and sharing that video with my friends and family. Why? Because I was scared of being judged. I was scared that people would think like, oh, look at this guy. He suddenly thinks he's a travel content creator. <laughs> And again, the thoughts, like I had this traumatic experience with Espresso Clock, like uh, what if other people want me to die in a car crash as well? I was scared of putting myself out there. But th this period in my life, as I said, was also the period where I was really working on good habits. Like I was working out constantly, I was eating healthy, uh, I read a lot of books, I listened to a lot of podcasts. So I learned about this thing that you will always be judged. No matter what you do, you will always be judged. So just do whatever you want to do anyway. And even though my finger was shaking like this, I hit the publish button, shared the video with my friends and family and only got positive feedback or positive reactions. That's where the ball started rolling. Like that first video was really, I was really anxious to upload it. Like I decided to make another video. The second video was like, fuck it. Yeah. Third video. Fuck it. Yeah. Started improving, started improving on my filmmaking skills, videography, editing, sound design, whatever. It was 2020. So C19 hit and we all had to work from home. So I had more flexibility. I was working my nine to five. But at the same time, I was working on my YouTube channel, making my videos. And in 2020, I decided like, okay, what the fuck do I want out of life? Like things are going great. Where do I see myself in five years from now? If I could imagine this perfect life, where do I see myself? So the plan was start of 2022, first of January, my girlfriend and I go take a sabbatical, travel the world for a full year. And somewhere in the back of my mind, I knew I have two years left to work on my YouTube channel. And I decided like, okay, if after two years, it turns out I'm actually good at this YouTube thing, I can make a living out of it and I enjoy doing it. Take my camera with me and I'll capture the whole journey of when, when I travel with my girlfriend. So 2020 and 2021 mostly consisted of me just working my nine to five, saving a lot of money. Uh, the plan was to invest it into more real estate so I could rent it out as a form of passive income while traveling. But eventually I decided that I wanted to invest it in myself. Like as my YouTube channel was slowly growing, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna invest in better gear, better camera, lightning, microphones, a MacBook so I can edit the videos better. And I remember, I think it was the start of 2021, I had about 400 subscribers. And by the end of that year, I had about 5,000 or 10,000 subscribers, I'm not sure. So in 2021, I really started to get that momentum with my YouTube channel. That's where I realized yeah, I'm not gonna buy that real estate. I'm gonna invest the money in myself and my gear and use that money to sustain ourselves while traveling so I can go all in on YouTube. And yeah, we bought a lot of gear. We packed our stuff. We had a good buy party on New Year's Eve and we started traveling the world. And I met so many cool people. We've been on so many adventures. We've seen so many countries. We've been literally around the world. My YouTube channel grew from 400 subscribers in 2021 to what is it now? 113,000 in 2022. I went from earning just a couple of hundred of dollars right before we started traveling to now earning a couple of thousands of dollars per month just from YouTube AdSense. I'm getting brand deals. I'm actually creating the life that I imagined, a life where I'm not working a nine to five. I don't have a boss. I'm creating content. I'm traveling the world and I'm earning enough money now to sustain myself and my girlfriend to keep doing this. And just to be clear, this is not meant as some weird flex, like look at us, we're traveling, skip the nine to five and traveling the world. Not at all. I mean, in fact, I know that these there's guys online, these young, rich hustlers that have achieved way more than I have at a much younger age. So again, it's not meant as a flex. It's meant to inspire you. If you feel stuck, if you think you're going through the wrong path in life, that it's never too late to just switch directions. The only thing I want to give you is you need to have a plan. My plan two, three years ago, my master plan was travel the world with my girlfriend, focus on YouTube and content creation. And I realized that plan, but this is just the start. While I've been traveling this whole year, I've been working on my next master plan master plan part two and boy oh boy i can't tell you much about it but now if you need help with building your own master plan if you feel stuck or lost in your current situation or job and just want to have no idea how to get out or where you want to go in life or maybe you do know what you want out of life but just struggle executing on those goals and have no idea how to get there then I want to help you. As I said, I've coached dozens of clients throughout the years, helping them achieve their dream life. And I've been having people reach out to me to ask if they, I can mentor them or coach them. So I made an application form in the description. In any case, I'm extremely grateful for where I am. And if I keep this momentum going, I know that there's so much exciting stuff coming my way, but also your way. Yeah, again, I guess this video is, was meant to show the exact steps I've taken my journey from the deepest lows to the highest highs and I hope it can inspire you or motivate you in some kind of way to take action and 
To realize that you can live any kind of life you want, you just need a plan and you need to execute on that plan. If you're new to the channel, stick around. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.